I now have to cool this off. So I brew my tea for my kombucha, my black tea. I don't think I mentioned that in the previous video. You have to use black tea. You need those tannins, those phytochemicals to feed your scoby. And again, you need the sugar to feed your scoby. So I'm not putting a lot of sugar in this for my own benefit, although I do love sweet drinks. But now I have to cool this off. So typically, if I am making a fermented drink, and you'll see it, I have an ice maker here. So I'll let the ice maker fill up and I'll basically kind of work this math out like this. I want to basically cool this down quickly, so I need about half of this to be boiled and the other half to be ice or cold. So I have my hot container here and I'm going to grab my oven mitts. I'm gonna pour the stuff into my ale pail and we're gonna go from there. I'm going to try to move the ale pail over here. I tried it earlier and I didn't think it worked too well. But this is all of my teas, where I was just reflecting what teas I'm gonna use once this thing gets started. And I'm using this big six and a half liter, um, or six and a half gallon ale pail so I can get a big SCOBY, okay? All of this stuff that I'm working with is quite hot. And again, godliness is next to cleanliness. Cleanliness is next to godliness, rather, when you are prepping uh, your fermented products, remember, if you're not being clean, chances are you can see God because any of these fermented items can be a starter kit for not only just the things you want, but things you don't want. Dangerous fungi and mold, and we don't want that. So I am going to get my tea bags out. That's the first thing because I don't want them to fall into this container. And I'm just using a typical ladle. I'm going to put these in a bowl without knocking everything over. Yep, yep, not, no chaos is ensuing today, folks. And again, I used about, for this two liters of water, I think I used 10 tea bags, mostly black tea. Um, this is where you can kind of cheap it out even if you want to, like get some cheap black tea and just go ham because you want to make a very concentrated thing. But I went a little fancy, I used Big Lou's. I am straining these out and I wish I had a camera person because I tell you I have some ideas for why I want to do videos and these tea bags here I'm just going to strain them out I'm going to use them for something later I'm going to grab my oven mitts because this is hot and I'm just going to move this stuff around here so essentially I can dump my liquid into my ale pail if you don't have an ale pail you can just make a small batch of this and use it in your, um, what is that thing called? The mason jar. Typically I miss, and it looks like this is open, so I just spilled tea all over my oven, that's great. But it's too late now. I always miss when I'm aiming here. And I generally leave this pail open, which I'm upset that I did that because I'm always trying to make sure I didn't do it, but it's okay. Um, I have my tea in here and I have about a gallon and a half or five liters of tea. I'm going to add about that much ice or cold liquid to quickly cool this down. I don't want this to be ice cold, but I want this to be, um, pretty much there. So I have a gallon, I'm at five liters, I'm actually going to get two gallons. So. I am watching my level here as I get this thing together. And I've done this before, so I'm typically good at guessing like how much of this and that. So usually my full ice chest can get me what I need. We can see that I'm not boiling anymore. But I also don't want ice at the top because again, I don't want there to be crazy temp fluctuations. So what I'm gonna do is stir all of this up melt it and then I'm going to add my scobies on top of it. If you don't have a scoby that you've actually have established add your starter or whatever you're going to add I'm going to cover this with my uh, pantyhose that I actually use I don't use cheesecloth because if you have no plants in the house and you don't have a fungus gnat problem you're good but other than that they can get through so I'm going to cover this with a couple of layers of pantyhose and basically leave it for a couple of weeks and watch that scoby grow once the scoby is established and I see that little papery thing going on, it's good. Now here's the thing, 
and this is a longer video. Here's the thing, and this is a longer video. I have to leave this alone. I can't, I don't need to stir it. I don't need to add anything to it. I'm like a ginger bug. I just need to leave this alone. Every so often I can peek in it and look, but I'm not gonna be fidgeting all in this bucket here. Like I just, I can't just be putting my fingers all in this bucket. I gotta leave it alone. And that is the thing I personally hate, but it's okay though. It's okay though, because at the end of the day, we're working towards a greater good. So I'm gonna keep stirring this up. And the next video you see about this, I should have a stove. If I don't, that means all of this failed. And if it did, it's okay. I just have to start over. But now that I have most of this gone, I'm gonna add all of my, my SCOBY here. And I have several SCOBYs. So I'm just gonna add them all except for like one. Okay, I'm adding all the liquid that goes in here with it. And that's it. I have one little SCOBY left. Whoop. And I'm gonna use that one just as a backup. But the rest of these I'm gonna add in. Now why am I adding all of them in, you ask? Again, these and all this liquid will hopefully help me get a nice, big, thick kombucha SCOBY started. Okay, the more SCOBYs you add, also the quicker this all ferments and gets, you know, together. So it's like multiple hands make everything like. So I'm gonna let this sit. I've stirred it up, I've added the sugar. And at this point, once it's done and you see it's established and everything, you can taste it every day and be like, hmm, is this, is this what I want? And go from there. But I like flavoring and different things. So we're going to see what happens. Y'all have a great day.